This exercise is a directive from His Excellency the President. Then everybody will cover in things, then you just spray on rubber. You are not spraying on, uh, on the things that they use. Government through the Ministry of Education and the Ghana Education Service will ensure that all these tertiary institutions are disinfected. If it is shut for three months, who went in there and introduced the virus? And the virus is going to stay for three months. The virus would have died a long time ago. Many of these have been driven by commercial interest rather than public health interest. So could your assembly have undertaken the fumigation that Zoom Nine was contracted to do by the Ministry of Local Government? Yes, like I said, the churches, the mosques, we did a spraying exercise free of charge for them. No, the president uh, himself will be the best person to explain why he has shifted from the position that he hold previously against just one to a new position. I don't bribe my way. I don't pay bribes. On a cloudy Sunday morning, heavily armed contingents of the police and the military gathered at the Independence Square in Accra, Ghana's capital. They were not embarking on an armed combat. It was July 19, 2020, a day set aside by the government to fumigate and disinfect markets in the national capital, an exercise that would be replicated nationwide. This exercise is a directive from His Excellency the President through the Ministry of Local Government and Rural Development. Following the successful execution of the first phase of the exercise we carry out in March this year. We are using about 10 days to finish the whole of the country. And it came from the Ministry of Local Government, so there is a plan. From here, we'll go to another region. I can't say it offhand where we'll be going, but I know from here we'll be going to another region, possibly Ashanti region, then we'll go to all the other. But in the next 10 days, we should finish the whole of the country. After the ceremonial speeches, a good amount of the chemical was pumped out for the cameras to capture. This is a very important part of the exercise because, as will soon be proven, the optics appear more important to the organizers of this show than the impact. After the show, the groups move to the markets. Here is the onion market at Agbubloshi in Accra. The sellers were lurking around for the exercise to be completed so they would continue the day's business. While they waited, they were entertained by drones that had become the symbol of sophistication and part of the justification for using this contractor. At the main Agbubloshi market, a pickup truck with a public address system was now appealing to the traders to vacate so the exercise could go on. Some of the traders said they had not been informed ahead of time. This was the second time since the outbreak of COVID-19 that markets across the country were being disinfected or fumigated as the government termed it. The first one was carried out three months ago. Some of the traders question the effectiveness of this exercise against the virus if the aim was to target the working surfaces. When you tell the people, we are coming to spray the market, don't cover your tables and your, uh, the things that you to sell so we can spray all the gadgets around you so that the disease cannot spread. It was not informed that this don't come to the market and everybody will cover in things and you just spray on rubber. You are not spraying on, uh, on the things that they use or the things that they use to sell or anything like that. You understand? And so anytime they need to inform well, 
when you're going, don't cover your things. You need to spray your things stop. Open your table. And the people who understand say you are coming to what? Spray their things. But when you tell them they don't come to the market, you are coming to spray the market. They don't know whether it's the you are coming to pollute the air or coming to spray the what? Some people see this right now, you are here, some people are saying you are coming to spray the gutters inside. I hope you are here. Eh, because it was wrong information. But if the, the information I've get to the people and explain in Chi or in the local dialect, they will understand and do the right thing at the right time. Because right now when you are spraying all these things, you are spraying the robbers. The regional minister said at the opening ceremony that the spraying was to target working surfaces where the virus could possibly reside. At the Makola and Okaishi area, the shops were closed and the chemical was sprayed on the roads and pavements. At the open markets at Makola and Agubloshi, the traders often cover their working surfaces and wares with polythene or tarpaulin, so the chemicals could not touch the working surfaces. A virologist at the Noguchi Memorial Center for Medical Research, Dr. Kofiboni says, what is often referred to as fumigation here should rather be disinfection. Fumigation is actually banned. Uh, it's banned. Because uh, when we talk about fumigation, they usually use formaldehyde. The fumes, that's why it's fumigation. The fumes from formaldehyde is a chemical agent and it targets the spores. It's because of sporicide, it's a sporicide. And because the formaldehyde is a carcinogen, uh, it's a cancer causing agent, it's more or less been banned. So now we talk about disinfection. But this infection is more or less using is hypochlorite, what we call the bleach, different concentrations to clean, to get rid of germs. So it could be bacteria, germs, or viruses. And bleach is quite a very strong uh, chlorine-based agent. It's very strong in killing some of these spores and, and particles. A researcher and public policy advocate Bright Simmons questions the science behind the fumigation or disinfection of markets in the wake of COVID-19. The Chinese did use um, viricide sprayed as a, a control mechanism. But in a lot of ways, that process was because of the fact that we know wet markets were very critical in terms of the jump, um, the interspecies jump of the disease. And we had imported diseases. So a lot of the disease were just literally human bodies. You know, as opposed to the Chinese situation where it was suspected that you know, there were a whole bunch of animals that were being um, uh, handled, live, live animals being handled, and that was leading to some uh, interspecies jumping. So, so we, our security were not the same as the Chinese. Secondly, the way that the Chinese system and the cities and the rest are organized is quite different from ours. We have far less concrete tenements and concentration of places like that, where therefore, from a formite point of view, um, viruses could proliferate. We have a lot more raw earth and other things that, um, and outdoors, there's a lot more outdoors, that on the whole, I think, makes surface spreading somewhat limited. So I'm not surprised to learn that when they've done environmental sensing and environmental sampling, which is something they ought to be doing, environmental surveillance, um, it's come, you know, they've got results that suggest that, you know, that mode of transmission is not very prevalent. Which then leads to the question you ask, why would then, why would, then would they spend so much money uh, on spraying these things around, around the place at such high cost. Our approach to dealing with the virus, as I've always said, will be informed by the evolving science and data. At the outset of the pandemic, the scientific community and the World Health Organization, WHO. In the management of COVID-19, the government of Ghana said it relied on the World Health Organization's recommendations. On 14th May 2020, more than two months before the second phase of the market fumigation was carried out, the World Health Organization released a report which advised against spraying of this nature because it wasn't effective in containing the coronavirus. In a situation report 115, the WHO said, In indoor spaces, routine application of disinfectants to environmental surfaces via spraying or fogging also known as fumigation or misting, is not recommended. 
spraying environmental surfaces in both healthcare and non-healthcare settings, example, patient households with disinfectants will not be effective and may pose harm to individuals. If disinfectants are to be applied, manual surface cleaning with detergent and water using applied friction, for example, brushing or scrubbing, must be performed first to ensure physical removal of organic materials, followed by use of a cloth or wipe, which is soaked in the disinfectant. Spraying or fumigation of outdoor spaces, such as streets, sidewalks, walkways or marketplaces, is not recommended to remove or inactivate SARS-CoV-2 or other pathogens. Streets and sidewalks are not considered as routes of infection for COVID-19. Moreover, disinfectants are inactivated by dirt and debris and it is not feasible to manually clean and remove all organic matter from such spaces. Even in the absence of organic matter, chemical spraying is unlikely to adequately cover all surfaces for the duration of the required contact time to inactivate pathogens. The Director General of the Ghana Health Service, Patrick Kumabwaji, said he did not know about the WHO report on fumigation and disinfection. Well, I, I don't know about that, but I, we know that um, using disinfection, not fumigation, is another way of clean environment, clean the viruses if they are there in surfaces and so uh, it's something that we continue to do to ensure that we maximize. See, the, the, the preventing measures, they don't all carry the same weight. Dr. Kofi Boni believes if mass disinfection is needed at all, it should target areas with high rates of infections because of the scarcity of resources. Target it. Oh, let's, let's, this market, we have had some upsurge of cases there. Let's go there and disinfect targeted. But then if we don't see any cases in uh, an open place, say, oh, let me just go and see that. If we have the means, fine. If we don't have the means, they just use the resources where they are supposed to be. Use it at the places where people are going back. Or you have had incidences, or you have had instances where we have had some cases there. Then let's go there and clean there so that we can get people to fully use the place. So I, I will go for the targeted rather than randomly using it everywhere when we know very well that we don't have the means. Our issue uh, broadly, we had more of a cluster based spread. There were many areas where they were not generalized spread. So you could have a region that is where just about three or four districts are the ones reporting cases. And in those, even those towns, there are certain localities where you are having cases, others you don't have. I would even rather concentrate on disinfecting, for example, um, hand railings, um, doorknobs, so things people touch almost every now and then. Because remember that this virus may be in your throat or may be in your mouth when you cough or your nose, your nasal region, when you cough or when you sneeze or when you open your mouth to say something. Occasionally you see droplets. So if this virus is hanging or hiding in the droplets and you, for example, touch your mouth or touch your nose, then you have the viral or the viral particles or the virus itself on your hand. Then you touch a door. So I would rather concentrate on cleaning or disinfecting those areas than the bigger rooms. So, were markets part of the fertile grounds for the spread of the coronavirus in Ghana? The Director General of the Ghana Health Service says no. Incidentally, we never, we even went to the Techiman market because we felt that was, especially when we were getting any case from Bono East. We did a lot of sweep there, but we still didn't get anything. But we believe that probably, apart from the initial work of disinfecting all the markets and creating some space and putting um, hand washing facilities in the market, the fact that ventilation is, we have, we run open markets in this country and they, with good ventilation reduces the risk of spreading. So we've not had um, any major issues of uh, um, spread in our market, apart from the one in 
part of Obuasi, which is a really small and a very, very congested market. But as soon as we did the decongestion, uh, the outbreak stopped there. The Kumasi Metropolitan Assembly said its research also indicated that the markets were not hot spots for the spread of the SARS-CoV-2 virus. The markets, we are finding interestingly that the markets and the central business district, the risk is rather low. It's paradoxically, we actually went ahead. The most crowded place in the central business district is called Edum PZ, Partisan Zokonis. And so we actually took, uh, uh, we screened 303 uh, shop, uh, traders over there. They, they gave permission, we screened them. And all of them came out to be negative. Wow. So it's up to hand not that, what is it? Then we, we realized that because it's outdoor, there's a lot of air blowing. So with a little bit more of adherence to the protocols, the risk is lowered. So the markets and the central business district, we don't, we are not, it's not facilitating that much. Rather, the workplaces and the communities. Okay. Markets and lorry parks were not the only places that were disinfected in the name of curbing the spread of the coronavirus. After extensive stakeholder consultations, the decision has been taken for continuing students in these tertiary institutions to return to school on 24th August to finish their academic year. Just as was done for final year students who returned to school, government through the Ministry of Education and the Ghana Education Service will ensure that all these tertiary institutions are disinfected. On behalf of His Excellency the President and Abu Dhabi with the support of Vice Chancellor's Ghana and all other tertiary institutions, I duly launch the COVID spraying of schools and all educational institutions, both under the Ministry of Education and privately owned and other ministries, duly launched today. The President ordered the closure of all schools in the country four days after Ghana recorded its first case. At the time, no school in the country had recorded a case but even granted that the schools recorded cases. Both teaching and non-teaching staff all went home. The question I want to ask is, can the virus survive in those empty classrooms after three months? And if there was fumigation, what was it intended for? If it is shut for three months, who went in there and introduced the virus? And the virus is going to stay for three months. I mean, from all that we have read, it's two to nine days, uh, two hours to nine days. So three months may be too long a time. So I'm, I'm not sure about that. The virus would have died a long time ago because, look, these viruses are non-living. In fact, they call them innate proteinaceous particles. So they don't have any life. They only get life when they get into a living cell. And so when they are sitting idle there, they only want to get into a living cell. And then they will overtake the living portion of that cell and use it to, pro to produce themselves severally. So that if this room has been locked for three months and uh, you dis decide to disinfect it, you may not be targeting virus. If you are sure that the place has not been encroached by anybody, then you can pretty much assume that if there was any virus there um, and the place has been closed for three months, then the virus is likely dead. I wrote to the Ministry of Education and the Ministry of Local Government and Rural Development asking the science or data behind the fumigation and disinfection exercises as well as the persons or bodies that advised them to spray. They did not respond to my question. There is however evidence that disinfections of this nature are not new. In fact, the two ministries may have used COVID-19 as a conduit to carry out an annual ritual which has become a subject of corruption investigations in Ghana. When it comes to surface transmission, a lot of work has gone into that. Um, and it will be surprising to me that after shutting down this place for months uh, or even weeks, um, disinfectants, uh, even if they are virus will make a material difference to whether or not this place is safe or not. I think a lot of the disease will still be in human bodies and they will bring them along. A lot of the transmission is also now known to be aerosolized um, and not surface-based, it's not formites-based. So 
the question of whether you know spend a lot of money trying to disinfect the grounds mm -hmm. will have have the right cost benefit um, ratios is one that I will err on the side of no. We probably need to be investing more resources in screening of people, trying to find out how we can do rapid screening of human beings. Uh, because all the evidence suggests that aerosolization is the biggest um, driver of infection, not surface transmission. So I would just say that, you know, without seeing some concrete policy analysis, um, some concrete scientific evaluations, we just have to assume that many of these issues have been driven by commercial interest rather than public health interest. In March, when the first fumigation exercise was done in the name of COVID-19, the Deputy Minister of Local Government and Rural Development, Obi Amwa, told Accra-based Kasapa FM in an interview that whoever said the aim was to kill the coronavirus was not being truthful. In Kum virus, we are back at the bread is being Kum virus. We are now several on can occur. In your can I say, you know, I'm sure you know, I can say, or moon be a moon, a crazy education awareness. No, the other issue is a more mona or more so a haunting. Now, just say, your coronavirus means in a spray market. No, and your coronavirus spray, and yes, spray, coronavirus spray, no, a bar, and also a baby mujuma. We are back at the same virus spray, no, just say, several on can of friends. There were more plan, Muda, now. So why would an exercise be carried out in the name of COVID-19 when the same ministry says it is not effective against the virus? It was an afterthought in a way. They, they had these fumigation projects that were stolen. COVID was just a good excuse to revamp them. The Ministry of Local Government and Rural Development said it single sourced the contracts for the fumigation exercise to Zoom Lion Ghana Limited, which raises further questions. Zoom Lion Ghana Limited has standing contracts with all the metropolitan, municipal, and district assemblies in Ghana to undertake monthly fumigation and disinfection exercises at the markets, lorry parks, public toilets, among others, as directed by the assemblies. This contract has been running since 2010, and the cost is charged against the assemblies and deducted from the assemblies' share of their common fund every quarter. The one with Zoom Lion, it is mainly the market, the uh, uh, waste landfill sites, public and then toilets. the drains, yes. Uh, but and <coughs> the assembly, we also don't have so much control over those ones. Which ones? The Zoom Lion. Once you sign the contract, it is it is uh, effective from their outfit. So it is uh, when they are ready to come and do the spraying, then they do it. One would also say the <coughs> assemblies pay, so you should have control. If you want them to fumigate the school, you tell them this month we want you to fumigate the school. If you want them to do the markets, because you pay them quarterly. Yes, even if it is deducted at source, it does not come over here for us to pay. Deductions are made at source. Zoom Lion again signed another fumigation contract with the Ministry of Health to undertake fumigation in all the assemblies in the country. This contract has been running since 2009 and is fraught with allegations of corruption. This second fumigation exercise is also supposed to be carried out at the assembly level meaning the two exercises cover all parts of Ghana. In my Robin the Assembly's investigations, I asked the district assembly officials who were supposed to supervise the fumigation contracts whether they knew the difference between the assembly's fumigation contract with Zoom Lion and the Ministry of Health's fumigation being undertaken by Zoom Lion in their districts. They said they knew about only one fumigation exercise, which was the assembly's contract. Various reports of the Auditor General have made adverse findings against the existing fumigation contracts between Zoom Lion and the assemblies. Despite the fact that there were already two nationwide fumigation contracts, the Ministry of Local Government and Rural Development awarded a third fumigation contract to be undertaken at the assembly level. This brings the number to three separate fumigation contracts awarded the same company to be carried out at the same places, that is, in the assemblies. In 2014, 2015 
2016 and 2017, the reason the ministry gave for awarding a third fumigation contract to Zoom Lion was that it wanted to stop the spread of cholera. In 2020, COVID-19 was the reason. I have done a bit of searching and I can't find any evidence of the FDA having been seized with this matter, having looked into it and after thorough scientific evaluation come to the conclusion that they ought to support the use of these substances as a public health control measure. The Kumasi Metropolitan Assembly says it has as many as 100 spraying machines. We have two major companies in town, mm, Kibedu, and there's also another man, another company. They also brought us spraying machines. Uh, the total number is more than 100. And that is why now occasionally KMA, mm, yeah, that is why now KMA on our own can go out to do the spraying of the churches and others. The Sanitation Department of the Accra Metropolitan Assembly, AMA, with the support of UNICEF, was spraying markets, lorry parks and public places in the wake of COVID-19. In July, however, the Assembly was asked to suspend its spraying so that Zoom Lion would conduct the second phase of the nationwide spraying exercise at an additional cost that could have been avoided. What this means is that the AMA was covered by the Ministry of Health fumigation contract with Zoom Lion. The AMA has its own fumigation contract with Zoom Lion. The AMA sanitation department, with the support of UNICEF, was undertaking disinfection to stop the spread of COVID-19. And then, the Ministry of Local Government and Rural Development awarded yet another contract to Zoom Lion to do fumigation or disinfection in the AMA area. In the Afram Plains North District of the Eastern Region, the District Chief Executive revealed that, even without Zoom Lion's existing contracts, the Assembly's Sanitation Department was well equipped to have carried out the COVID-19 disinfection of the markets. The Assembly to be supported by uh, spraying or disinfecting all the churches free of charge, the churches and then the mosques. Okay. We did that free of charge. The Department of Agri, we have uh, this spraying machine, uh, motorized spraying machine, so at least we have 10. So we have the capacity to do that. Just a matter of getting the chemicals. And then the district environmental health officer will supervise and then will do the spraying. So could your assembly have undertaken the fumigation that Zoom Lion was contracted to do uh, by the Ministry of Local Government? Yes, oh. that is what I said. If it was with the 10 motorized spraying machines, mm -hmm. the assembly could have done that, provided the chemicals were made available. Because like I said, the churches, the mosques, we did the spraying exercise free of charge for them. With your the own assembly. chemicals? Yes. The chlorine? Yes. The assembly, we purchased them and then we did it for the churches. When I first wrote to the Ministry of Local Government and Rural Development, the ministry said it cost 76.5 million cities for each of the two fumigation exercises, making a total of 153 million cities. The ministry also said there was a variation being processed for additional cost on public toilets for the second phase of the exercise. This means the cost of phase two would be more than the cost incurred in phase one. The ministry did not give me the total cost of the exercise, even though it said the contract had been approved by the public procurement authority and such approvals would often include the cost. Other sources, however, reveal there is more to the cost than what the ministry gave me. All these costs to government come at a time of reduced revenue at our ports, falling global prices, near collapse of the hospitality industry, and a general decline in global trade. Such unexpected expenditure often leads to increased budget deficit. However, it should be noted that these are not ordinary times and as such, we require extraordinary economic and financial interventions. When the Minister of Finance, Ken Ofriata, presented a supplementary budget to Parliament on July 23, 2020, he outlined government's expenditure in managing the COVID-19 pandemic. He stated in paragraph 327, page 66 of his statement to Parliament that, as of the end of June 2020, the government had spent 122 million cities being, quote, 
allocation from budget to support fumigation and management of landfill sites. The finance minister presented what had been spent on only the first phase of the exercise, which means the cost of the first phase alone is close to the total cost of phase 1 and phase 2, which the ministry gave me. I wrote again to the ministry, seeking further explanation on why its figure was lower than what the finance minister presented to parliament. I'm yet to receive a response. I will not be surprised that you know we can have multiple contracts and multiple activities, some of it conflicting. What I find a bit worrying uh, is the way in which we don't seem to have the institutional architecture to call anybody to account anymore. The Minister of Finance mentioned landfill site management in addition to the fumigation, which raises further questions because a subsidiary company of Zoomlion named Waste Landfills Company Limited has separate contracts with assemblies in the ministry to manage landfill sites across the country. Apart from fumigation or disinfection related contracts, Zoom Lion has other contracts either directly with the assemblies or with the government to perform sanitation functions nationwide. The Minister of Finance also mentioned that the Ministry of Education spent 150 million cities to fumigate and procure items for the reopening of schools. We ought to, as a country, now that you know we've got into our seventh decade of um, post-independence experience, we need to start beginning to ask ourselves, how are we going to re-architect our institutions so that there's self-policing, so that there's genuine accountability, so there's transparency. I'm beginning to see hopelessness and powerlessness become so entrenched among the citizenry that I really worry what will happen in this country in the next couple of years if this continues. The Ministry of Local Government's initial response to my request suggested that the cost of the second phase of the COVID-19 sanitation exercise would be more than the first one. The 122 million cities was spent on the first exercise alone. Even if the second phase is maintained at 122 million cities, then phase 1 and phase 2 would amount to 244 million cities. If half of the 150 million cities spent by the Ministry of Education on fumigation and logistics is taken as the cost of fumigation, then the two ministries would have spent at least 319 million cities on fumigation in the COVID-19 period. That is almost 60 million United States dollars. And this amount is significant considering the fact that the government of Ghana had to go to the World Bank and IMF for support to fight the virus. The Ministry of Education also announced the second phase of the school's fumigation. The airports, the Ghana Armed Forces, the police, prisons and other state agencies and ministries also contracted and paid Zoom Lion to undertake their own fumigation and disinfection exercises. This means the cost is definitely more than what is known. Mr. Japan, how come it appears that in Ghana your only customer is the government? Kwajo? Foreigners, who is their customers? The government of Ghana's dealings with Zoom Lion have always been fraught with allegations of corruption, but neither the NDs nor MPP administrations are interested in prosecution, even when there is evidence of wrongdoing against Zoom Lion and public officials. I don't bribe my way. I don't pay bribes. I do a genuine business. I do business that have my values. I protect my integrity. And brand. The reason why I chose to come here today was to disprove to people that I am not a correct person. I am a person who wants to share with people who values people's uh, need, things, and help. In 2013, the World Bank blacklisted Zoom Lion from participating in any World Bank funded projects for two years. The World Bank said the ban was imposed following Zoom Lion's acknowledgement of misconduct impacting the World Bank financed Emergency Monrovia Urban Sanitation Project in Liberia. The company paid bribes to facilitate contract execution and processing of invoices. I have to tell you and confess that it was a very sad day in my life. A young guy trying to get into the international world, trying to do something and this. But I put myself together and encouraged. 
in 2013, the Jida corruption scandal revealed that Zoom Lion was deeply involved. A two-year sanitation contract that expired in February 2013 was found by the Government of Ghana's Investigative Committee to have been inflated by at least 74 million cities or 21 million US dollars at the time. The committee recommended a discontinuation of the contract, but the government did not act on the findings. The Kufuado led MPP criticized the contract while in opposition, but in government, they extended it without addressing the malfeasance they criticized. Between March 2013 and February 2019, that deal cost the nation 1.62 billion cities or 400 million US dollars. Within this period, there was no written agreement between the government of Ghana and Zoom Lion. Neither was there an approval by the Public Procurement Authority. Following the robbing the Assembly's investigations, the Financial Forensic Unit of the Ghana Police Service found that at least 200 million cities was paid to Zoom Lion and its subsidiary companies for fumigation, but no official of the ministry could attest or certify that work was done before the payment was made. The docket was presented to the Minister of Justice and Attorney General more than a year ago, but nothing has happened. We got a whistleblower disclosure to the effect that uh, Zoom Lion, the administrator of the Common Fund, and 138 district assemblies were colluding, conniving um, to defraud the state. The Commission on Human Rights and Administrative Justice, Shraj, also submitted an investigative report on Zoom Lion's sanitation improvement package contract with assemblies, in which Shraj found that the company had received payments for no work done. The Attorney General is yet to act on the report two years after it was presented. Zoom Lion and its subsidiaries have defied the scandals and enjoyed enormous political patronage. I wish to assure you that as long as I remain president, government will give your company every support to continue to grow. It doesn't matter who is in the helm of affairs. If you know how to keep relationships, you meet and still face your long. I remember about five days today, myself and Dr. Sian Dupont were talking in his house there, and he had calls calls from people from the current government. Normally, you would think that because of the relationship we had with the past government, he has no relationship here. I look at him and I say, Chama, you're a champion. He say, no, everybody, everybody must be your friend. I was so touched. Maybe I'm only short of mentioning him. If I tell you who called him, I told him, I got up and saluted him and said, you're a champion. We have to encourage you. Uh, when you are in the forefront of doing things like you are, you'll be the subject of controversy. <laughs> it goes with the territory. But I, I know you a little bit. I know you're capable of handling the controversy and staying focused. You know, the president uh, himself will be the best person to explain why he has shifted from the position that he holds previously against just one to a new position now praising just one out of doing a, bad, a good thing i did not get the scientific evidence or data that necessitated the covid 19 disinfections and fumigation when i asked the authorities in charge i did not also get evidence of its impact there is however evidence that even if the spraying was needed there were multiple existing sanitation and spraying contracts with zoom lion that could have done the same work these notwithstanding, huge sums of money were spent on this disinfection instead of tackling other serious challenges of the nation. When the coronavirus pandemic hits Ghana, the Noguchi Memorial Center for Medical Research and KCCR were the testing centers that the nation relied on. These institutions survived mainly on grants from foreign donors. The nation had only 67 ventilators and patients were already being turned away from health facilities because of the shortage of beds. With 7.5 million US dollars, the private sector in Ghana built a 100 bed capacity infectious disease center in the heat of the pandemic. The private sector is currently mobilizing funds to build another infectious disease center in the Ashanti region 
where health authorities admit that the high COVID-19 mortality rate recorded in the area was because of the lack of healthcare facilities. Well, what we also realized in the middle to realize was that the, the bed capacity available for sick people in Kumasi at that time was inadequate. So you had just about 18 beds in Kumasi South, Kumfanochi about 10 or 12 beds. And so there were a lot of people who could not get care. And the health sector is just one of many institutions that badly need funds such as the ones being spent on fumigation and disinfection. Manasseh Azure Arena reporting.